So, whenever we have people over, the first thing they ask us about is where to get some actual Scottish food. But it can it can be a bit of a problem because a lot of people come to Scotland and they only really know about haggis. I thought maybe it would be really helpful to make a video about this, to make a video about what else is actually Scottish. You know, when you're traveling the United Kingdom, you might see that um, Scottish and English cuisines might kind of overlap a bit. As Simon says, if something is way too much of a local meal, it means that it's so horrible that nobody else likes it. Therefore, it just kind of stayed in the one spot for centuries. Some of the things we will be talking about today are actually available all around UK, but are in fact Scottish. We're gonna go out and see what we can get from local stores and restaurants. But first of all, I wanted to talk a bit about what you can get in the local supermarkets. Oat cakes, that's something that when I moved here, I didn't really know what it was. In Scotland, these are like little, they're a bit like digestive biscuits in a way, but savory or like not really. They, they are on a blander side of the flavor spectrum, but I still like them. The texture is quite satisfying and Usually you get them alongside soup or cheese. Speaking of oats, there's two very Scottish brands. One of them is Nairns. Nairns? Nairns? The last one. Please never quote me on the pronunciation of Scottish stuff because I cannot. This brand makes a lot of OT biscuits, which uh, as you can see on the packaging, it's 40% less sugar than normal biscuits. Um, I guess it depends on what kind of biscuit you were eating originally, but they are delicious and the, these are ginger, but the chocolate kind is amazing. And stoats, they also make like porridge pots and porridge mixes and oat cakes again. As I mentioned before, oat cakes, good with cheese. And one of the most traditional Scottish cheeses is the crowdy. This is the black crowdy because I couldn't find a normal crowdy, but the usual crowdy is this kind of lowish fat, fresh cheese. It kind of tastes, it has this like sour taste somewhere between cottage cheese and quark. Um, it's kind of nice to just put on bread or maybe with some salmon. Uh, this one is like a special variety that's rolled in uh, oats and black peppercorns um, and it looks great. It's from the Highlands. Mmm. These guys, super duper Scottish once again. I don't think it's uh, gonna take you much effort to believe me when I tell you that these are very old because the packaging just kind of stayed the same for it seems like decades and decades. The bakery that started making these, uh, was established at uh, the end of 19th century and has been held by the same family, the Tanok family since then. These guys are one of my just legit favorite things about living in Scotland. They're kind of like a, a digestive biscuit with a dome of soft marshmallow and coated in chocolate. And when I say marshmallow, I don't mean like the squishy gelatiny kind of marshmallow. It's more like if you just whipped up marshmallow without using any gelatin, so you don't get the chewiness. It's just kind of soft. It just kind of melts in your mouth. Um, these, I believe, are seen like the most important product that Tanox make. Um, apparently, Chris Martin from from Coldplay really likes both these and tea cakes. If that's even relevant to anyone in 2018, but it is true. You can get a packet of these, there are like eight of these, for about 150. Maybe if you go to like Poundland or something, you might get them a bit cheaper. And yeah, that's it, that's what you get. Just this like finger of a wafer and the filling is kind of like a chewy caramel. Ah, this is gonna be in my teeth forever. Drinks. First of all, Krabby's. When I moved here seven years ago now, old, uh, this was the first thing I drank. It was eye-opening to me that ginger beer that actually has alcohol in it exists. Now Krabby's was established in 1801, so it's a super old company. It was actually uh, started in the port of Leith. The guy who started these uh, based himself there because it gave him a good access to a lot of the ingredients that he needed for this that, you know, he couldn't obviously grow in Scotland, like ginger. It has 4% alcohol, so not super strong. It's kind of like your regular beer, I would say. Plus, um, plus sugar, so it's kind of like a good twist on cider. And I also wanted to do a little shout out for the Thistley Cross Cider, which I was surprised to find out that 
they haven't really been around for that long, for about only like 10 years or so. But they are doing really well. Um, they do this traditional one, which is also 4% alcohol. Then they have the, the original, which is 6.2. So that's a bit of a, bit of a strong one. Uh, you can also get a ginger one. They also do the, the whiskey cask one. So that might be actually like the, the Scottishest of their flavors. So now we're gonna take you guys for a little lunch in town. Uh, both of these places and both of these meals are really affordable and both are kind of a nice mixture of traditional Scottish food and uh, immigrant influence from like hundreds years ago. You can think of it as of like pizza in New York, very iconic, right? And also it was an influence of Italian people coming into New York. Uh, similarly here you had Italian people coming at the start of 20th century. The Italian community then kind of mixed with uh, Scottish people created the amazing thing that is the macaroni pie, the, the carbo-loading holy grail. We tried one from the pie maker which is quite known for it. It was only about 120. Uh, it's not really like lunch size but once you're there you can also buy yourself a little scotch pie. They come warm, you can sit down. It's like a quick cheap easy lunch especially in the colder months amazing very satisfying very unhealthy but that's Scottish food for you the second thing I want to recommend to you is a haggis pakora and that's great especially if you don't really want to go all in or like if you don't have the budget to go to like a central place and buy yourself a, a proper haggis nips and tatties meal uh, here in the pakora bar you can get uh, five really great haggis pakoras freshly made and really on the inside nothing but haggis which is not always the case sometimes you get the haggis kind of mixed with other things here you just have great top quality haggis uh, fried in some Indian spices and I think mm, so nice again quite spicy because haggis is spicy and you know the pakora makes it spicy so if you don't like spicy it might not be the best choice for you but we loved it one more thing about Indian and Scottish cuisine mix I'd like to say that the chicken tikka masala which you will find in most Indian takeaways in Scotland and in Britain is actually considered a Scottish Indian meal because apparently the backstory behind that is that uh, somewhere in Scotland uh, someone ordered a chicken tikka which you might know is like traditionally just a, just a grilled spiced piece of chicken and they found it super dry so they kind of called the chef in and basically just told them like I don't like this do something about it make a sauce please and the chef apparently went and mixed some Campbell's tomato soup with coconut milk and that's how chicken tikka masala came to be so now we made it to one of our favorite Scottish restaurants here in Edinburgh uh, it's called the Room in Leith and as you can tell from the name, it's not in the center, it's in Leith, which is kind of the seaside porty side of Edinburgh. It's a place where we genuinely love taking all of our friends whenever they visit. Um, it's, it's like slightly fancy, not like the cheapest place ever, but also not overly expensive. I think that it's quite casual. We came here because they have a lot of like smaller sized dishes of you know like Scottish classics. Um, the first one we're gonna try is Cullen Skink, which is probably Scotland's most famous soup. It is a uh, smoked haddock and potato soup. Sometimes it has cream or milk in it, sometimes it doesn't. We're also having some haggis because what would it be without having some haggis? Um, you're gonna see some like a very nice presentation of it, uh, the kind that you would traditionally get um, on Burns Night. So you know people will get haggis, neeps and tatties. Uh, tatties are potatoes and neeps is turnip and you have that with like whiskey sauce usually or you know there's a bunch of other sauces as well that can you know be an alternative uh, and people read Robert Burns's poems and, and eat haggis. Um, if you're into Scotland, you probably know what haggis is by now. I mean, it's basically like sheep's insides in the sheep's stomach with a lot of oats. Go and on, sell it, hon, why don't you? If you're a vegetarian and this is grossing you out, 
the vegetarian haggis is actually just as delicious. It's it's really surprising to me that vegetarian haggis actually tastes and like has pretty much the same texture as the normal haggis. Basically, you uh, replace all the meat with pulses, pretty much, and the rest stays the same. So you still have the oats and the um, the spices and like taste-wise it just tastes super similar. They also make a special scotch egg here and even though it sounds like a scotch egg is a very Scottish thing, it actually isn't a scotch egg. Uh, the first one was apparently created by Fortnum and Mason department store in London, uh, so it was just invented by English people. Bummer. But the one they have here, instead of the normal sausage meat, is covered in storno whey black pudding. And black pudding is something that you can kind of get all around England, but the storno whey black pudding is a special super duper black pudding, which can only be called that here when it's made in the Outer Hebrides, kind of the islands outside of Scotland. And it's um, the name is actually protected by European Union now, so yeah. If you're getting something that's called a Stornoway black pudding, it must be made in Stornoway and it's the real thing. Last but not least, I would like to point out that if you're in Edinburgh or Scotland, and especially Leith, you should get some seafood. Because um, the seafood here is the, the freshest of fresh. Like, please, just like do yourself a favor, get some mussels or scallops or, you know, even just some Scottish salmon. I come from a landlocked country, so the fish I grew up with was really crap. But since I moved here, I absolutely love fish. I just I could eat it all the time, and oftentimes I do. One year ago, I made this unofficial promise that when I hit 1,000 suburbs, I will have the infamous deep fried Mars bar. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a deep fried turd. It smells kind of nice though. It smells like a donut. We went to Cafe Picante here in Broughton Street, which is supposed to be like kind of good for it, if anywhere really is good for this sort of abomination. But um, the thing is, people in Scotland don't really ever order these and they will usually tell you that this is not like a real Scottish food. But we did our research and it was actually created in Aberdeenshire. So let's give it a... I mean, I don't want to like it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's also very like it's quite rubbery, surprisingly. Oh dear! Oh my god! That's not all, my friends. Um, ta da! Mm -hmm. I'll need to put this on the floor again. Yeah, you do that. Iron brew. You probably, if you're going to Scotland, it's kind of like the haggis of drinks. You know that this exists, right? Uh, just recently, they had to change the recipe, so. Um, even though there's like a, a diet iron brew and a non-diet one. The non-diet one also has sweeteners in it. I think it's to slightly avoid the sugar tax, which is coming into Scotland soon. Am I right? I think so. Also, if you ask under the counter in some uh, corner shops, they'll give you the old stuff still. <laughs> They're holding it like hoarding. <sighs> Tastes like cheap bubble gum. Nice. I don't know, like it's a it's a divisive flavor for foreigners. Scottish people love it. Yes, we do. You're not Scottish. Well. Do you like it? Yeah. Hopefully this video was some help to you if you're visiting Edinburgh and you're not quite sure what outside of haggis and iron brew you should try. Thank you for watching. Let us know if you'd be interested in seeing a video just about breakfast down below in the comment section. And we are gonna see you soon.